Let's talk about the Helsinki Businessmen Study. And I have to tell you that this is one of my all-time favorite studies. It's been going on for quite some time. And the results were for the researchers and the researchers who continue to follow up on this study, who continue to look back on this study, continue to be surprised with the totally unexpected results. And for me, it's exactly expected. It's exactly what I would think. And so we're going to go over that and we're going to go over some of the reasons why. And so you might be saying, well, what are those um, unexpected results? Well, first, let's take a look at what the study is. So the Helsinki um, Businessmen Study, which was a study from 1964 to 1973, done primarily with um, businessmen in Helsinki, Finland, about 50% from Helsinki, about the other 50% outside of Helsinki, um, throughout Finland. Uh, there were 3,490 male executives, and they looked at risk factors that would lead to an um, increase in mortality. So they wanted to decrease these risk factors and primarily it's with cardiovascular disease. And so they looked at BMI, cholesterol, triglycerides, blood pressure, blood glucose, smoking, and they did both um, resting and um, non-resting ECG. And one of the things, what they did was they had, there were two groups of, of individuals. And there's the group that had was the active group, and that is that they intervened. There was intervention. In other words, if you had high cholesterol, you lower the cholesterol. If you had high triglycerides, you work with lowering the triglycerides. So they used various medications, um, BMI, uh, let's put you on a diet. It's lower your uh, get you into the uh, normal area if you're on uh, if you're smoking. Uh, try to get you off of smoking. Um, so it was really just a total intervention. Now, both groups received just some general um, recommendations for diet and how to, uh, how to improve, but the control group did not um, really strive to, you know, if you have high blood pressure, they continue with high blood pressure. So the surprise to all this is that, and so five years later, they measured this, and the group that they intervened with, uh, they were able to successfully intervene. They were successfully able to control blood pressure, successfully able to control cholesterol, successfully able to control triglycerides, yet they had an um, increased rate of mortality. In other words, they died. More people died that were in that group than other group. They said, well, that's after five years. There could be some extenuating circumstances because they looked at both all-cause mortality, and they looked at um, particularly CVD risk, uh, CVD mortality, cardiovascular disease. And what they found was that in both cases, that more people died when there was intervention. And that, that really was a, um, a, a total surprise to, to well, I'll, I'll say to basically to everybody. Uh, let me see if I can even um, bring this up here. And one of the things, and this this becomes, this is um, crazy when we uh, when we look at this. And here we have this is a uh, and this is a follow up test. This is going on. This was done um, back in 2018, and as it says here, increased mortality despite successful. Multifactorial cardiovascular risk reduction in healthy men, a 40-year follow-up of the Helsinki Businessmen Study intervention trial. So what they found was, and, and we go down and, and you see, it says, uh, despite this, uh, mortality has been consistently higher up to 25 years post-trial in the intervention group than the control group. And so that's... That's the surprise. Here's what I'm going to tell you. And this is one of the things you have to get into your mind that the body is smart. You are born with this innate intelligence, this inborn intelligence within the body that knows exactly 
how to run the body. So when something goes wrong, the body tries to make adjustments to combat that, to fight that, to, to help that, to make it, to improve that. Uh, I, we see that in the way that bone grows. We see that in the, um, you know, an example I use all the time is that, and I always say that if a person has a microbial infection and they get a fever, that is the body, it's working overtime to try to raise the temperature because heat is a catalyst. So speed up reactions in the body anywhere from, from 100 to 1,000 times faster. So you're increasing macrophages, uh, monocytes, macrophages, T cells, beta cells, all these immune reactions. The other thing it does, it makes it a condition where we can live and the microbes can't. Now, it's not normal to always have a temperature that was high, but it's normal to have it high when you have a microbial infection. And it's the same way. So what they found out was that when people had kidney disease, it would the blood pressure would go up. And they said, well, that's causing that. And it's like, well, wait a second, you have a filter. The filter is getting blocked. You need to put this stuff um, this fluid through that, it can't get through as much, you raise the pressure to allow that to happen. We see this repetitively in the body. The, the body is smart. You know, we have the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. There's that fight or flight. When you're trying to run away from something, you increase the blood supply, you increase the blood pressure to the, to the muscles, you decrease it to the stomach and to the digestive system. You know, and it's it's just amazing. We look at cholesterol. Cholesterol is a repair um, substance. When the when there's a crack in a blood vessel, it sends this gooey matter over, and it sort of helps repair it. You know, we know we know that from a uh, from the University of um, Hall in um, in, in uh, the UK, there's a study that shows the that the highest rate of death in cholesterol is the people with the lowest cholesterol. It's under 160. Yeah, you'll hear doctors try to say the lower the better. You know, it's like the cholesterol is bad. You can't have good and bad. There's good under circumstances. There's bad under circum certain circumstances. What happens is you, you always want to try to get the body functioning properly. So that's what um, that's what I'm totally about. I understand that um, the body is smart. Um, most often, symptoms are good. They're telling you something's going on, and the body's giving you the clues on what you need to do. All right, so it's it's really it's really simple. You know, I've done weight loss for years, for instance, and one of the things someone will come in. In fact, we had somebody come in. They were just kept gaining weight, gaining weight, gaining weight. They were um, close to 600 pounds. And the guy goes, you are not going to believe this, doc. And I said, stop there. I said, you're going to tell me that you're not diabetic, huh? He goes, exactly. Everybody assumes it. I said, well, if you were, if, if your body can super effectively convert that sugar into fat, as long as it can continue to do that, you're not going to be, once you can't do it any longer and you're that size or if you can't, that's what it enabled you, the reason, one of the reasons why you got to 600 pounds. I said, but the whole thing is you have a broken metabolism. Let's correct that. And you got to remember on so many conditions, doctors will try to, they'll, they'll, they'll look at a condition and they do they run test after test after test after test after test to say, what is it? And I always say, I know exactly what it is. People say, what is it? They say, I've gone to, you know, some outrageous number of doctors all over the country trying to figure this out. I said, you have a body that's not functioning properly. So let's take a look at your metabolic processes. Let's try to get your body functioning the um, properly. Let's optimize your cell energy. Let's optimize the mitochondria. Let's start from a molecular perspective, a cellular perspective and work our way on, on up. And you're gonna, your body will do much, 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 much better. And understanding that food 
is the easiest way, has the most profound effect on metabolic processes. So we use all whole, whole food supplementation and we use whole foods. And that's one of the reasons why I use the uh, food pharmacy uh, SAS system, which I'm the, uh, I developed that, um, that system. So there's a, there's a lot that you can do, but I just wanted to get in, um, just wanted to remind everybody of that and some of the things that what we can do to, to the body and to how we really optimize this. But always remember that Helsinki businessman study. The body is smart. God created us with amazing intelligence and knows exactly how to run the body. So let's get the body functioning optimally. Our standard disclaimer, this, the information provided is for educational purposes only and is not medical advice. The statements made are the opinions of the participants have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. By providing this information, we are not diagnosing, treating, curing, mitigating, or preventing any type of disease or medical condition. This is not intended as a substitute for professional advice of any kind. Before beginning any type of natural, integrative, or conventional treatment regimen, it is advisable to seek the advice of a licensed healthcare professional.